at St. Edward's, I was getting A's and sailing along in grade six when Sister Thomas Mary called me from my classroom. Smile, she said, and that was my audition to play the Immaculate Conception in the annual school play. I wore a long white gauze gown tied at the waist with a gold drapery cord and a blue satin cloak made from drapery bought at O'Neill's department store. I appeared in a grotto made of gray felt, bulged out with bunched up newspapers, and I was wheeled through the corner of the stage backdrop, standing on a small rickety platform pushed by the Serio brothers, trying to outdo one another for speed. I said no words, just smiled. The sisters thought their idea was such a success that they had a photo taken the next day. Nora May Hay kneeling as Bernadette in front of the real granite convent wall. That same year, I got a tour of the convent and a silver rosary because I contributed my Sunday Mary Jane shoes for a pupil who was without any and wore galoshes to school. I learned that the nuns rose at 4.30 a.m. for daily mass. Right then and there, I figured I was not called to that high vocation. In 1934, Maryland celebrated its 300th anniversary, and a huge field mass was held in the Baltimore Stadium. All Catholic school students marched in procession, costumed or uniformed for the occasion. St. Edward's didn't have a marching band like some of these Baltimore ethnic parishes closer to their European roots. We were Germans, Irish, Italians, generations removed, so our nuns honored their religious order. Twelve girls were dressed as nuns to lead our parade. My younger sister, Jo, was chosen. So disappointed was I that my mother interceded and the nuns gave me a spot in the select group. They figured I really wanted to be a nun. Truth is, it was pure envy. It was late May, sun beaming down on us as we sat crowded in our black robes on the backless wooden benches. Thousands of children's voices rose in unison singing Mother Dearest, Mother Fairest. As ceremonies began, and I fainted. Two Marines carried me out of the stands on a stretcher down to a hospital tent that had been set up on the field. Sister, may I remove your bonnet, a nurse asked. I nodded weakly. Long brown curls fell to my shoulders. How old are you, she asked, amazed. Twelve, I said. Sister James Agnes came looking for me as the ceremonies ended. She grabbed me unceremoniously by the elbow, and separated from the others, we marched along 33rd Street, looking for a number four streetcar to take us in. Along the way, the torque where Grandma had twisted a nickel in the roll of my black stockings gave way, and I hobbled along, trying to pull them up. While Sister, wary that passers-by would take me for a real nun, demanded that I stop, and I let them just hang over my shoes. A streetcar finally took us aboard, and my mother met me at the other end. Sister was glad to be rid of me, and I was taken into Krigger's drugstore for a Coke with ammonia. I had fainted, after all. That old stadium was torn down and replaced after World War II. Fifty-seven years later, when the so-called new stadium was torn down, the Baltimore Sun bought my story with its memories about the old one. I graduated first in my class, and I have my gold star medal in a curio cabinet. The photograph of me and Bernadette hangs in my bedroom near the certificate of my first communion at Old St. Edward's School.